Okay, um, let's prove this vector identity that we have written across the top here. This now will serve us as example three of a vector identity problem that involves the del operator. Now, if you haven't watched examples one and example two, how we're going to proceed to prove this identity might not make very much sense to you. So if you haven't watched examples one and example two of the vector identities that involve the Dell operator, uh, please look those over. Because what we're going to do is, as we did in those previous videos, we're going to rewrite this like this. First, let's look at what we're doing. Here, this is a triple scalar product. Here we have the cross product between two vectors. We're going to take the dot product of that with the del operator, treating the del operator as a vector in its own identity or as an own independent vector. And we're going to see, and then what we're trying to prove is that this trailer triple, triple product is equal to this scalar triple product minus this scalar triple product. And here, then, we're taking the curl of vector f and the dot product of vector g minus, now we're taking the curl of vector g and the dot product of vector f. And as you saw us do in the previous video with examples 1 and example 2, we break this into two parts. But we say, let's consider that we have the del operator operating only on vector f. On this expression, plus the del operator operating only on vector g. In this expression. And that is a valid argument. We showed that again in a previous video with examples 1 and examples 2. But now, at this stage of the game, we're stuck with having to figure out exactly what does this mean. For example, we couldn't just say, well, that would have to be then, and this is going to operate only in vector f, and it must be this dot f cross g. No, because this is the divergence of the vector f, and if you've watched the previous videos, you'll know that's not a vector, so that doesn't even make any sense. Same thing for here. So, in order to proceed, what we have to do is, at this stage, we invoke the scalar triple product identity, which again, we proved in an earlier video. What we have is this. And this is equal to, the order of the vector stays the same. And then we interchange the dot and the cross. Like this. So, let's take our expression here. If we apply the scalar triple park identity to this expression, this will equal, the order stays the same, only we have it like this. And see what happens here is that the del operator, it's operating now only on the vector f. And then we take the dot part of that with vector g. And that's what this is. We have this scalar triple product, but the del operator operates only on the vector f. Likewise, here we have a trailer triple product, and the del operator is going to operate only on the vector g. So that is what this is. This is. this term right here.
So that means then that this is part of our expression. what this means because this is this. Now we have to determine what this means. Now what we do is we go back to our scalar triple product here and we're going to interchange the order of these two. And of course if we have two vectors when taking their cross product, if we switch their order around then we have to have a minus sign times that. So here now what we're going to have is this minus del dot g cross f. And now let's go ahead and apply the scalar triple part identity to this expression. So this will be equal to, we don't want to forget our minus sign, minus this quantity. The order stays the same. We have del, we have g, and we have f. Only now, we switch the order of the cross and the dot. So we have this. And now the del operator operates only on vector g. So from this triple scalar product here, where again in the last video we proved that this is a valid approach here to break that up into two components like this, this right here, that's what happens then when we have the del operator and the trait in the scalar triple product where the del operator operates only on vector g with the minus sign here. So this is the second part of our expression right here. That comes from this term right here. So we put it all together and we have that del cross or del dot f cross g that is equal to this term, and here we're just taking a dot part of two different vectors, so you can write it like this, g dot del cross f, with the minus sign, this term, f dot del cross g, and there's our vector identity. So it wasn't a real lengthy one to determine, but there were several different concepts that we had to invoke along the way in order to determine this vector identity. The first concept is what we established in the last video, or the last two videos actually, where when we have the del operator and it's operating on two or more functions or scalars, whatever, um, you break it up like this, where you have the del operator operating on each individual part only. And then what we have to do is figure out exactly what does this mean. We have a trailer triple, triple product like this, where we have a del operator that operates only on one of these vectors. And that's where we made use of our trailer, of our scalar triple product identity. So that this expression becomes this expression. But here now, the del operator in this scalar triple product is operating only on vector f. It's not operating yet on vector g. So that's what this is.
and then we reverse the order of these two, which means you have to put a minus sign here. And once we do that, once it, we once again invoke the, the scalar triple product identity to get this expression. So now in this scalar triple product, the del operator is operating only on vector g out of this cross product here. And that's what this expression is. And as these two expressions together, they give us the entire expression. And that's how we put it, put it out down here like this. So that's the thinking and that's the strategy that's involved uh, with a lot of these vector identities. And again, if you haven't seen the earlier videos, it might not make much sense to you at this point. So go back, look at those, then come back and review this material, and hopefully this will help you along. Because vector identities are not easy to deal with, but this is the thinking that goes into them. And definitely come back, join us for some more videos, and we'll try and tackle some more of the more complicated vector identity problems.